we'll warm it up. We'll solve the proportions here. So if we cross multiply, whoa, we have 3F equals 2 times 21 is 42. We're going to have to divide that by 3, which gives us F equals 14. Over here, we cross multiply. We have 3P equals 8 times 50 is 400. We divide by 3. We have 133.3 repeating, and it says round to the nearest tenth. So we'll just say point 3. Cross multiply 9P equals 60. Divide it by 9. Let's see, doesn't 54, 6 times 6 and 2 thirds? 6.7. The calculator would just make this so much easier. We're very lucky we have calculators. And cross multiply here. We have 16g equals 57. Divided by 16. I don't know what that is. 57 divided by 16. 3.5625. So we'll say 3.6. So we're going to be doing that today, but we're going to be doing story problems or um, similar figures problems. So the nice thing about similar figures is they're in proportion to each other. So they have great stuff here. Let me kind of draw out what I'm talking about here. So like if we had this figure here, and this person was um, 10 inches tall. And this person here was 20 inches tall. Everything on this person to the right would be in proportion with that same ratio. So everything on the bigger person is twice as large as the smaller person. So let's say this small person had a foot that was one inch long. This person's foot would be two inches long. So it's nice because then we can set up proportions and solve. So they're not going to tell us how big the big person's foot is. They'll say like, oh, that's our x. So we're going to set up a proportion to figure that out, which is what we ended with in the proportion notes. But you could say like, OK, well, we're doing the height of the person over their foot. So this person was 10 inches high. Their foot was 1 inch tall. Uh, this person is 20 inches high, and their foot is x inches long. Then you cross multiply, you have 10x equals 20, divide by 10, and you get x equals 2. So they're not always going to be that, like, oh, this one's twice as big. It might be like, oh, this is three and a half times as big. So if you can set up the proportion, it actually makes it pretty easy. Parallelogram ABCD is similar to, that's what that little squiggly half of a evil mustache looks like. Um, that's what that means, is similar to parallelogram EFGH. Find the value of X. So every line over here corresponds with a line on this parallel. So let's see what we have labeled and marked. Great, they marked everything we need. So this line, line AD, corresponds over here to line HE. The top line, line AB, corresponds to line EF. So this will help in setting up our proportion. Again, you can set it up a few ways and be fine. There's four ways to correctly set this up. So let's say I did top over left side. So on my small one, that would be 16 over X. I did top over left side. We'd have to do the same thing with the other fraction. Top over left side. 24 over 18. That is one perfect way to set it up. Another way, let's say we did left side over top. So we'd say x over 16, and then here left side over top would be 18 over 24. You'll see that they have the same cross products. We have x times 24, we have 16 times 18. Great, those work. Another way you can set it up, maybe. Another way you can set it up is like 
small parallelogram to the corresponding large parallelogram. So if we were to say like x corresponds to the 18th, so we did small over large, and then it should be equals small over large. So the small other side would be 16 over the large side, which would be 24. It's the same cross products as the other way we set it up. So really it's like, what are you most comfortable setting up? You can set it up that way. Uh, so we'd have 24x equals 16 times 18, I don't know, 288. Then we just have to divide it by 24. And I think that's 12. Yeah. The last thing I would encourage you to do is to make sure that that answer makes sense. If you look at the one they marked for us, the top is a little bit larger than the left side. So over here, the top should be a little bit larger than 12, and it is. So that's a good sign. So you should do a quick check at the end to make sure your answer makes sense. So we're going to use that same parallelogram, one of them, um, but I just copy and pasted it down here. Parallelogram KLMN is similar to ABCD. Uh, in example one, find the value of Y. So we just found X and we found out that it was 12. So we're going to parlay that knowledge into solving for Y. So 12, the side of 12 corresponds to the side with the Y on it. And then our top sides also correspond, 16. 21. So again, you can set this up eight different ways and be totally fine. You can also set it up eight ways incorrectly, so you do have to be careful. But you got a 50-50 shot of setting it up perfectly. But I usually like to do like one shape in the same order as the other shape. So I would do like 16 over 12. So top over left equals pop over left. Again, not the only way to set it up. If you multiply diagonally, 16 times y is 16y. 12 times 21, 12 times 21, 252. Divide by the 16, we get 15.75. So again, do a quick check. The left side should be smaller than the top. So is 15.75 smaller than 21? Yeah. And if you look at even comparing like 16 to 21 is like adding a little bit more, less than half of 16. So a little bit less than half of 12 would be like, I don't know, four, 12 plus four is 16. So yeah, it's pretty close. So these are all good indicators, good quick checks. Now, the story problems they love here are uh, scales of maps and shadows. So using shadows can be an indirect measurement. So like you could figure out how tall a tree is by measuring the shadow of the tree and then comparing that to like how tall you are compared to your shadow. So tons of story problems like a tree casts a shadow 10 feet long. A five-foot woman casts a shadow four feet long. Um, we're drawing our own. So let's get creative and cute. Here is our tree, and it's got a shadow. And then here's our lady, and here's her shadow. So let's fill in what we know. Uh, the tree's shadow is 10 feet long. The five foot tall woman shadow, so she's five feet tall, she has a four foot shadow. We have to figure out the height of the tree. So let's call that X feet. X feet. Yeah, that's the new superhero. X men, X feet. All right, we can set it up a few ways. Let's say actual height over shadow. So the tree, actual height is X, shadow is 10. Actual height of the lady is five, shadow of the lady is four. 
Is this the only way you can set it up? No, of course not. That is just one of the eight ways you can set it up. If you cross multiply, we have 4x equals 5 times 10 is 50. So when we divide both sides by 4, we get 12 and a half. 12.5 feet. Let's make sure that makes sense. The actual height is just a little bit bigger than the shadow. So the lady's shadow is 4, she was 5 feet. Shadow of the tree was 10. The actual height should be a little bit bigger. So 12 is a little bit bigger than 10. Great, that's a good check, that's a good sign. A building 70 feet high has a 150 foot shadow. Let's draw that out. Here's our building, it's 70 feet, and its shadow is 150. I know these drawings are just incredible. A nearby, a nearby flagpole has a 60 foot shadow. How, what is the height of the flagpole? So let's call this x feet. So we set up our proportion. Many ways you can set it up. Let's go height over its shadow. So the building was 70 feet, its shadow was 150 feet. The height of the flagpole is x, the shadow of the flagpole is 60. Now if you have a calculator, you really don't need to simplify any of the fractions. You can. So like if you didn't have a calculator, I have 70 over 150. I'm going to divide them both by 10. So I'm dealing with 7 and 15, which are just smaller numbers. If you have a calculator, that step is kind of unnecessary. You can just cross multiply. But you'll get the same answer regardless. So if I cancel that out, 15 times x is 15x. 7 times 60, 7 times 6 is 42. So 7 times 60 would be 420. Divide both sides by 15, 420, oh my goodness, 20 divided by 15 is 28. So the flagpole is 28 feet. Okay, make sure it makes sense. 70, 150 is like just a little bit more than double that. So. 28 times 2 is 56, and 60 is a little more than double that. Great! Alright, this is the last one, the scale drawings. Now the scale of any map is essentially your first part, it's your first fraction in your proportion. So when this says the scale of the map is 1 inches to 40 miles, there we go, we've got our first ratio. 1 inch 40 miles. But like I said, with the proportions or when we were starting to set up these, consistency is key. So if you're doing inches over miles, then your other fraction needs to also be inches over miles. About how far from Atlanta is Athens? So if you look at the ruler here, here's one inch, uh, and this is one and a half inches. It's inches, so we're going to put it up with inches. We're looking for how many miles this is. So then if we cross multiply, 1 times x is 1x equals 40 times 1.5 is 60. And we don't even need to divide by 1 because it's already 1x. So this is just 60 miles. The distance from, oh my goodness, I always do that. I'm just so silly like that. The distance from Atlanta to Macon is about 75 miles. What is the approximate map distance between these two cities? So if we have the same ratio, one inch to 40 miles, one inch to 40 miles, we're going to want inches over miles again. And it said the distance is about 75 miles. Sometimes I think about these videos I make, I'm like, have I ever used technology before? I'm moving stuff all over the place. All right, it's 75 miles. We need to know how many inches on the map. 
So if we were to cross multiply, 40 times x is 40x. Set that equal to 1 times 75, which is 75. You know we're going to divide it. Divide by 40, divided by 40. So 40 times 2 is 80. So this would be just a little bit less than 2. 1.875 times. Does it say where to round it? No. Oh, sorry, this is inches. 1.875 inches. That's it, dude. We did it, man. Come on now.